I'm Paul Daddy from Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue, and today you will see how to treat yourself to some great tasting ribeye steaks that are absolutely excellent. But at the same time, they don't break the bank. Now this video will show you what works for me. Now it can be very beneficial if you develop the habit of keeping tabs on the weekly sales of your local supermarket where you happen to shop. This can be as easy as signing up for their weekly email or looking at their app once a week. Once you score some great deals, it can be a habit real quick. Win-win. I scored some ribeye roast when it went on sale at an incredible price. I got these right before Christmas and that seems to be a good time to catch sales on me. So what did I actually get? I got ribeye roast, bone in, select grade. That's the catch, is select grade, bone in. Well, the bone in part's not really a catch, but select grade, is it's under prime and it's under choice. Now my channel's based on being a barbecue channel and I firmly believe that the art of barbecue is to take a lower quality piece of meat and to make it absolutely delicious. Now it's a whole lot easier to start with Wagyu or prime but the cost can get out of reach real quick. So this video's for the rest of us. Now, when I got home from the store with the ribeye roast, I cut it up into three parts. I didn't film this part because to be honest, I was only thinking about eating the ribeyes. I wasn't thinking about making a video at that time. Now, that can be a video for another day, cutting it up. Okay, step one, I debone the ribeyes. You wanna leave the three bones attached to each other. So I'll smoke these later. Next, using a knife, the steaks were all sliced off. Last part here is to trim them up. I saved the trim for making sausage, vacuum seal, and label the three parts, and you're good to go. Now let's cook the steak. Once you take those steaks out, you want to pat them dry. Now I'm using a multi-blade meat tenderizing tool, commonly called a jacquard. You see how the blades come out? This cuts little tiny little holes in the meat and it mechanically tenderizes it. Now I like to do both sides. It's very easy unless the blades get stuck in some of that hard white fat. Now that can slow you down just a little bit, but overall it's very, very simple to do. Now the next step, I'm adding some seasoning. Now my choice here is Tex Joy seasoning. I use the Tex Joy here because of my impression that it's a little bit saltier than some of the other seasonings. I want to add a medium coating on both sides in the hope that the salt can help to tenderize the steak. Now once you've got the steak seasoning, you want to bag them up and vacuum seal them. Now here you want to make sure the steaks lay side by side and that they've got some space in between them. I'm doing the vacuum sealing with my Magic Seal MS400 vacuum sealer and I can use the smooth R emboss bags but the truth is that the emboss bags they're just a little bit easier to deal with and they do a little bit better job. You're a lot less likely to have floating bags to deal with if you're using the emboss bags. That's my opinion based on my experience. Now these steaks are being cooked at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours using the sous vide process. And of course, if you're not familiar with it, sous vide is cooking with hot water while the food's in a vacuum seal bag. It's a very precise process when compared to other cooking methods. Now low and slow can help you tenderize just like cooking that brisket for an extended period of time. If you don't have a sous vide machine and you don't plan on getting one, then I would consider reverse searing. But just keep in mind that that's a different process. And these extreme extended cooking times that I'm using today, they just would not apply there. I have to make a disclaimer. I'm simply telling you how I do this and the success that I've had. I'm not telling you to do it. Why I do a disclaimer? Well, because the cooking times and the temperatures that I'm talking about, they're outside the USDA recommended safe temperature and times. The danger zone is considered between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit in about a two hour time period. So that's the general rule. But there are exceptions. Do your due diligence here. There's always a risk when eating anything cooked below the food safe temperature. Now you have to select your own safety boundaries. Here's a timetable for red meat roast from the 2013 edition of the FDA approved Serve Safe Manager textbook. You got 130 degrees Fahrenheit at 112 minutes. So as you can see, the higher temperature you're cooking at, the shorter time you can get by with, according to this text. I pull this information from the fearlessfresh.com and keep in mind that we're using information on roast and steaks. If a piece of meat like this has some bacterial contamination, it's generally on the outside of the meat. So the searing process should kill that bacteria. And you need to be aware that none of this applies to ground meat because grinding up the meat, it mixes and redistributes that bacteria throughout the product. 
And this makes ground meat much riskier than steaks and roasts. So I don't eat rare hamburgers, but some people do. Stay safe. Okay, I chose 130 degrees Fahrenheit. If the steaks are thinner, then I'd consider a lower temperature. Of course, your personal preference should be one of your top considerations. Before the sous vide is done, we're gonna make up some of the Old Bay compound butter. I don't love Old Bay, but it's amazing on a steak, so you need to try this. One stick of unsalted butter, softened. One to two tablespoons of Old Bay seasoning. One half teaspoon MSG, that's optional. Now mix it up and it's ready to use. It's said that unsalted butter has a higher burn point than salted butter. The steaks do have a lot of salt, so I'm not sure if it matters if you go unsalted or salted, but I generally go with the unsalted butter. Okay, we've cooked at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. You could do a little more, you could do a little less, whatever suits your schedule. Once you take those steaks out, then pat them dry. You need to add a little bit more seasoning if that's your thing. I'm gonna be adding some Fiesta steak seasoning and some Montreal seasoning and two Gringos Chupacabra Brisket Magic. Now I start with the finer ground seasoning and then I finish with the most coarse. Two of these steaks will have salt and pepper only. Season both sides and the edges. We'll be searing in a cast iron skillet starting with a little bit of Pam cooking oil. So use the oil of your choice. I'm starting on my legs power burner on high heat. Now this burner is pretty powerful so when the skillet's at least 350 degrees then the heat's turned down just a little bit but if the skillet starts smoking a little bit too much then turn it down some more. Now here's the drill. One and a half minute per side and then turn. And you can add some butter after the second or third turn. The average cook time is about six minutes plus searing the edges. The thickest steak went about seven minutes plus the edges and the smallest went about five minutes plus the edges. Remember to start checking the steak temperature and when it heats up, it goes fast. So be careful or you could overshoot your mark. You can use compound butter during the cooking process and after you get the steaks pulled, just top them off with some of that compound butter when it's on the cooling rack. Recommend the rest times five to seven minutes so the juices have a chance to be reabsorbed. Let's check one out. I'll try this bad boy. Cuts like butter. Tastes so good. Now guys, this is a reheated steak. Now you can lose a little bit of that red color, but it's still extremely good. Ribeye steak at a fraction of the normal price. Now I'd rather have this steak than most of the steak houses that I've ever been to. Just remember that I made adjustments for the steak size and for personal preferences. Now one size doesn't fit all in cooking, so just use this information as a guide. If you found information in this video useful, then be sure and hit that like button on your way out. Consider subscribing, and I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. <laughs>